Hello, everybody. Well, as you can see, I'm uh, on vacation in a, uh, an exotic place. I'm actually in Maui at the moment, where uh, my wife and I are taking a week's uh, holiday. But uh, I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk to you about uh, an issue of software craftsmanship. In particular, there is a, a meme, an idea that is common in software environments and is just really very wrong. And that is the idea that the best way to get software done quickly is to rush, is to make a mess, and then go back and clean up that mess later. Some people um, discuss this as uh, technical debt. And they will say to themselves, well, we have to go into a certain amount of technical debt, and then we'll pay that back later, but we've got to do it because it's important to finish quickly and get there first. So, I want to tell you, the way to get there first is not to make a mess. The way to get there first is to do things well, to do things cleanly. Technical debt is the idea that you will take certain feature shortcuts. Some features won't be fully implemented. Some features will be implemented in a, uh, um, an attenuated way, in a smaller way, uh, instead of technical debt being rushing to make a mess. When you do incur technical debt, what you are doing is carefully deciding what you are going to implement and what you are not. And then once you've decided that, you implement what you decided to implement as carefully as possible. Now, perhaps it can't scale as well as a full-fledged system could. Perhaps it's not going to be as fast as a full product would be. There are lots of ways for you to take a shortcut to incur a technical debt that is not messy, that is not sloppy. It doesn't mean you're doing a poor job. Good technical debt is debt that is entered into carefully, like any debt. Bad technical debt, where people rush off and make a horrible mess in their code, is much more like people who get a credit card for the first time and slam it up to the max that's irresponsible, that's improper kind of technical debt. You're a bunch of programmers and software professionals. What practices should you follow that will help you incur the least amount of technical debt and deal with it responsibly? And number one is just plan out your technical debt like any, any person would who was buying a mortgage. Make sure you understand what that debt is going to cost you and what the interest payments are, how, what you're going to have to redo later. Make sure you think through it carefully and then execute that debt as carefully as possible. Right, do the best job you can. All right, well, so the next thing I wanted to talk to you about was um, test-driven development. Test-driven development, as you know, is a discipline that helps you write your code well. You um, write your tests first, then you make those tests pass, and then you refactor. Now, you all know what this is. If you don't, there are plenty of videos out there that will help you figure it out. What I want to tell you is this. Test-driven development is how you go fast. Test-driven development is how you go well. If you have a deadline to keep, if you've got a, uh, a, a release that you have to get to or a product that you've got to deliver, if you need to do something fast, you do it with test-driven development. You write your code carefully. You make sure it's tested. Because here's the thing. If I don't have to make the code work, I can meet any schedule you set for me. But if the code has to work, well, then you better make sure it works. And the fastest way to make sure 
that your code works is to write your tests first and then make them pass. Now this has another effect, and it's an important effect. It has the effect of eliminating fear. You will no longer be afraid to make changes to your code. How many of you have had the experience where you've brought some code up on a screen and that code is a mess and you think, well, hell, I'm, I'm going to clean it. And then your very next thought is, God, I'm not touching it. Because you know if you touch it, you'll break it. And if you break it, it becomes yours. If you're doing test-driven development, that just doesn't happen. Because you have a set of tests that you trust. So you can run those tests anytime you like and prove to yourself that you have not broken the code in any way. And because you can prove that to yourself, well, that means that you can make any change you want without fear. Without the fear that you will have damaged the system. Because you can run the tests and the tests will tell you that you haven't damaged anything. Of course, that means the tests have to be very good tests. But think of how fast you could go if you could constantly keep the code clean without fear. If you could constantly manipulate the code any way you felt like it without the worry that you'd be damaging something. So, now let's talk about refactoring. When you see code that's a mess, you should clean it. After all, the stuff that slows you down is the messy code. You've all had this experience. You've all looked at messy code and known that that messy code would be the thing that slows you down. So how do you stop being slow? Well, you keep your code clean. How do you keep your clean code? Ah, how do you keep your code clean? Have another drink. <laughs> hmm. How do you keep your code clean? You refactor it. You clean it. Every time you look at it, you think, ah, I could make a small change here. That would improve it. I don't like that name over there. I don't like that variable name. I don't like that function name. Uh, that function is too big. That function uh, does too much. You look at everything and you clean it gradually. You are never, ever quite done. You fiddle with it here. You fiddle with it there. You refactor it all the time. And that keeps the code very clean. If there's a design change that you need to make, you can refactor that design change into place. Of course, in order to do all of that, you need tests. Because you can't really refactor a system unless it has tests. And the reason you can't is because you're afraid. You're afraid to touch it. So, without tests, you might try to refactor everything in one great big shot. Uh, take a week or two or three and clean everything up. Oh, uh, and then of course you fail at that. And, you won't deliver the system that you said you would deliver, and it won't be cleaner. A good refactoring discipline is a discipline that occurs all the time. You're doing it all the time, minute by minute, hour by hour, you are cleaning the code constantly. And in order to have the kind of courage it takes to clean the code constantly like that, you need tests. You need tests that you trust with your life. So let's talk about one last thing. Let's talk about pair programming. Do you guys program in pairs? Do you sit down two people at one workstation and work together? This is a very valuable technique. Now, you don't have to do it all the time. You don't have to code 100% of your stuff in pairs. But you should use some amount of pairing. And why? Well, the reason for that is very simple. You're a team. You work as a team, and one of the aspects of a team is that you cover for each other. You are able to step in when a team member is hurt or sick or unable to do their job for a smart, short period of time. Uh, think of a soccer team or a football team or a baseball team or a basketball team. You know how to play your position, but you can play someone else's position in a pinch for obvious reasons get hurt on the field. Or think about a ship. You've got a job on board ship, but you can do someone else's job for obvious reasons. How does a software team cover for each other? 
Well, the way you cover for each other is by knowing each other's job well enough to step in. And how do you do that? Well, you pair with each other. How often do you pair? Oh, you know, 50% of the time, 60% of the time. And who do you pair with? You pair with everybody on the team. How long does a pairing session last? Oh, 30 minutes, an hour maybe. The idea here is that you have multiple eyes looking at the code, multiple people who know what you're doing, you know what other people are doing, so if it comes to a pinch, you can step in and help each other get the job done. Anyway, that's really all I had to say to you guys. I hope you have a good conference. I hope uh, you take what I've said to heart. Remember, you're not going to go faster by rushing. You're not going to go faster by skimping on your tests. You're not going to go faster by not doing refactoring, by delaying refactoring. If you want to go fast, if you want to get to the deadline, do the best job you can. Work well. Work conscientiously. Work like it matters that you do a good job. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.